My name is Keshwani. This K E S H W A N I Keshwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the GRE. We have been solving GRE math problems out of this book here, the official guide to the GRE, the revised journal test. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. The problem that we are about to solve is the one that you will find on page number 233 and today is our day number 115 today is our lesson number 115 before I actually starts before I start before I actually start solving the problem that you see on on the top of page 233 I want to quickly go over the problem that we did yesterday part of the problem is on the blackboard here the parts of it I already erased it the earlier part if you have not watched yesterday's videos day number 114 it is important it is imperative it is crucial that you watch yesterday's video first before you try to solve this problem here now what happened yesterday this is this is dealing with the concept of compound interest now what happened yesterday was we learned how to figure out compound interest through step by step process what happens in compound interest what happened in, in yesterday's problem was that we had invested one thousand dollars for a period of three years and each year we were given 4% interest and what we found is that through compounding because of the because of the compounding effect what we found is that at the end of three years at the end of three years we had one thousand one hundred and twenty four dollars and eighty eight cents in our account as opposed to the simple interest in which case we would have earned only hundred and twenty dollars in interest and we would have had simply one thousand one hundred and twenty dollars the difference of four hundred and eight four dollars and eighty eight cents the difference of four dollars and eighty eight cents that you see in these two scenarios simple interest as opposed to compound interest is because of the compounding four dollars and eighty eight cents what do I, what I want to do now right now first of all before I do the next problem is actually to show you the formula and if you know the formula uh, if you can remember it which I cannot myself but if you can remember it uh, you can simply apply the formula and not have to go through all this all these tedious steps. So here's the formula. We'll do the same exact thing that we did yesterday. So we started out with $1,000 our investment. One plus we are earning 4% interest. 4% interest over a period of three years. That's it. That's your formula. This 1,000 here, this 1,000 here is our principal. This $1,000 is the principal that we are investing. This 4 that you see there is the amount of interest, interest rate per period. Notice how I said it, per period. It does not have to be per year. If the compounding, if the interest rate that is uh, stated to you is in it's, they can tell you that we're going to pay you 3% interest per month, we're going to pay you 3% interest per week, or we're going to pay you 3% per hour. Whatever that period happens to be, that's what that is. It's the amount of interest, interest rate per period. And this is the number of periods. Number of periods. Let's write it in more general terms. For the principal, we use the letter P. Interest rate per period, interest rate per period is our rate of interest. This is R. R stands for the interest rate, and the number of period is usually denoted by N. So what it boils down to is the amount of principal that you're investing times one plus the interest rate over N. That's it. That's the amount of interest that we're going to earn. That that is what we're going to end up. That is what we're going to end up at the end of the period. This this one one times P this one times P is our principal that you invested, the amount that we started out with, plus the P times this part is the interest rate. That's all. So this Let's apply this formula and see what answer we get, okay? Take out your calculator and do it out. 1000 times 1.04 because 1 plus 
1 plus 0 0.04 is 1.04 raised to the third power. Let's see what it gives you. You do it and I'll do it with the calculator and see what we come up with. We better come up with what we came up with yesterday, which is 1.04 raised to the third power times 1,000. I get $1,124.86.4. And because we were, we were doing rounding uh, I, uh, yesterday, we came up with one thousand. We came up with one thousand one hundred and twenty-four dollars and eighty-eight cents. That's it. We're going to do the same thing in this problem. Because if we were to do this problem step by step by step, it will be very tedious. The only difference between the problem that we are about to do, which is two point two point seven point eight, two point seven point eight, and the problem that we did yesterday, is that instead of four percent over here, we are earning. Three and a half percent. So here we'll have three and a half percent. How do you write three and a half percent? It's zero three five. Instead of zero four, zero three would have been three percent. Zero three five is three and a half percent. Again, we are investing for three years, and we are investing one thousand dollars. Everything stays the same. The only thing that is going to change here is instead of zero four, we have zero three five raised to third power. And if you do it out with the calculator, see what it gives you, and it should give you the same exact thing that the book is showing you there. Ah, but that problem is different. The problem in the book is different. The problem in the book is very different. We are not investing one thousand dollars. Okay, read, let's read the problem together. Let's do the problem together. I was in my haste, I made assumption. I assumed that you were investing one thousand dollars just like the example that we did yesterday. In the example 2.7.8, $1,000 is not the amount of invest, $1,000 is not the amount of initial investment that we're making. $1,000 is what we want to get at the end of three years. The question is, in order for me to be able to get $1,000 from the bank at the end of three years, what should I give the bank at the beginning of the three years? That's the question. Let's read it together. It says, if the amount of P is to be invested, if the amount of P is to be invested, at the annual interest rate of 3.5%, compounded annually, what should be the value of P so that the value of the investment is $1,000 at the end of three years? I'm going to say it one more time. I'm going to paraphrase it. What's going on here is that at the end of three years, at the end of three years, I want bank to give me $1,000. The question is, what should I give the bank at the beginning of three, three years if the bank promises to pay me 3.5% interest compounded annually at the 3.5% interest compounded annually and I'm going to keep my money for three year period. So, the amount of money that I want to get at the, end, at the end of three years is already determined. This is what I want to get. This is the amount amount we want to get at the end of three years. Question is, how much should we invest? So that's your P. The, that's the principal. And that's the unknown here. How much should we invest if the bank pays us 3.5% interest and we're going to keep the money for 3 years? That's it. We have to solve that for P. That's all it is. If you divide both sides by 1.035 raised to third, that's your P. P here is 1000 divided by 1.035 raised to the third power. And that's all. Now I like now like I told you yesterday, I have been at it for many many years now since 1989 and very very rarely you find a question on the GRE dealing with compound interest. They do not appear very often, particularly these days starting from just last year when they started giving you this, well not last year but in the recent years when this last year is when they give, when they came up with the revised GRE but these days they give you computer adaptive exam computer adaptive exam means exactly what it says these days the exam adapts to the to your to your skill so unless you're scoring into 700 or above well I shouldn't say 700 because this is the only skill unless you're going to score in the 80th percentile or above, you're not going to see a compound interest problem in your in your exam. 
This is only for the top 20th percentile. This is a hard question. It's not going to appear very often in the lower level. But we have to cover it because it's in the, because it's in the book. So let's do it then. Pick up your calculator. 1.035 raised to the third power and then you divide that by 1000 and take the reciprocal of it and I come up with $901.94 $901.94 let's see that's our answer that's all it is that's the end of it alright I will see you tomorrow when we'll do the problem that you see there, 2.7.9, okay? Bye now.